welcome to a very blustery autumnal afternoon on Beverly Westwood. Um, I'm making my way over to my favourite tree on the Westwood. Um, when I get there, I'll talk to you a little bit more about what I'm doing today. Um, as I come towards the end of my half term break, unfortunately, the Lake District was a washout. Awful weather, blocked roads, couldn't get anywhere. So, yes, they turned out to be a very long day trip. So, woo! I'll get a little bit further on and I'll talk to you more about what we're doing today. But it's awesome out there. So, as is often the case when I'm up on the Westwood, um, now this is the first time I've actually done a vlog, I think, out in the open in the Westwood. Usually I'm in the woods that are behind me over there, birds and bushes. But whenever I come to the Westwood, I'm always distracted at some point by a shot of, hang on, where are we? The black mill, which you can just see there over my shoulder. Um, and my challenge is always to try and take a new perspective or a different type of shot, because it's so well shot, the, the mill, from different angles, especially when you're close to it and the trees that are around it. So I'm over on the other side of the Westwood and I just wanted to capture some of the autumn colours in front of the mill with some really beautifully dramatic clouds um, that are coming overhead, lots of texture there. So should make for a nice image. Um, I've darkened it down a little bit um, just to make sure I get the texture in the cloud and don't blow out those highlights. And I'll be able to lift the rest of it in, um, in Lightroom afterwards, bring out the, some beautiful oranges that are in the trees around it. So the composition isn't quite even. I would rather it was a little bit, a little bit closer to the trees on the right hand side, but um, yeah, it's a nice shot and I think when we've got that processed um, that'll look really nice. So um, yeah, hopefully that's come out nicely and I'll put that up for you now and I'll head just along to my uh, favourite tree there and talk you through today's uh, challenge as it's going to be. As I say, welcome to Beverly Westwood. I do hope you can hear me. As I said, it's a very blustery day, um, which will make for some interesting uh, photography conditions. So, as I said, I was coming here to look at my favorite tree, and there she is. Um, I'm guessing you can probably tell why that's my favorite tree on the Westwood. Um, in photography terms, it's really easy to isolate. It's a nice uniform shape, um, and sort of stands above, the, uh, above this lovely sort of bowl of greenery below it that usually when it drops all its leaves later um, that will be full with um, orange leaves and that's the shot that I've got before I've got the bare branches with the leaves below it um, I've also shot it in winter time as well where it's covered by snow so it's a beautiful tree um, so for today's video I thought I would set myself a bit of a challenge and um, now I haven't come up with this challenge this has come from a photographer who I greatly respect um, and often take inspiration from and that's James Popsis um, and basically it's a photography exercise to take a subject and try and shoot it in five different ways. So that's what I'll be doing here. So taking the tree that I love um, and just using it to sort of train my eye and try and find five different ways um, that I might be able to uh, capture an image a bit. But so, I mean, just looking at the tree, you can see how late we are with autumn colors coming in um, as it's only just got some flecks of yellow at the moment um, as the rain starts to fall down. So that can only add to the uh, to drama of the composition. So let's get set up and think about different ways that we can shoot this. Okay, so to keep it simple, to begin with, I'm just going to shoot the way that I would normally shoot this tree, um, which is basically just shooting it um, dead on, which might seem fairly straightforward. Um, I've got my 18 to uh, 140 lens on, my kit lens at about 35 mil. Um, yeah, and I'm just thinking, because it's at 35, no, it'll be fine on that lens. I was thinking whether I shoot it with my prime, but it shouldn't be any sharper than this one should be. So I've got it at about 35 mil um, with the polarizer on, um, but there's a few things sort of compositionally speaking, if that's a word, um, that I just need to consider. So what I'm going to do is just quickly step into the camera and just explain to you the way I framed it up. Right, so I've had to take some slight shots as the rain's come in. Um, but yeah, so as I'm saying, as I was saying, to, um, to line it up properly, um, I think if you've got a lone subject like that, the tree needs to be in the absolute right the centre. Um, and also I think you just need to be careful about the distribution of the trees behind. So I don't want to that one. I want there to be like half a tree coming out the side there with some space. So I've got one so there's just one tree on the side. Um, and I've got the shutter speed high enough so that we're going to catch the uh, branches um, frozen in motion. I think I could probably actually just move that down a little bit to about 125, that should be fine. 
Um, so yeah, so a bit of drama coming in, some nice clouds in the background, not quite as textured as before. Um, but yeah, so that's one way that we can shoot this, just straight on, make sure the focus is there. Um, F11, everything nice and sharp. Um, that's gonna have a nice moody look to it. Hopefully we might be catching some streaks of rain um, in the shot on that one. I'm not sure there's enough of it coming down now, but so that's one way that we can shoot that. Um, so let's move on and find another. <laughs> Okay, so the second um, way of shooting the street that I'm going for is exactly the same composition, exactly the same place, I've not moved the camera, um, but what I have done is I've put a 10 stop filter on the front of it, um, as well as the polarizer, which basically reduces obviously the amount of light going into the camera and that means it lengthens your shutter speed, so it gives what we call a long exposure, um, which means the shutter speed stays open for longer. Um, and basically any movement would then be um, captured by the camera. So usually you'd want to shoot a, a tree like this with a high shutter speed to capture the leaves um, frozen sort of in time, if you like still, because it is a, a breezy day, they're blowing around quite a lot. But I thought I would just like to see what it looks like to get a longer exposure of about 25, 30 seconds, have the branches and the leaves moving around to give a nice blur of color and then have everything else nice and frozen still. So um, I've tried that and I actually, I think there's something quite cool about it. Knowing that it's deliberate, um, I quite like that. So again, with a bit of processing to bring out those colors, I think that'd be quite an interesting composition. So I'll put that one up now. Do let me know what you think. I've never tried that before. Um, might look rubbish, but you know, experimentation. Um, never done that before. Don't think I've ever seen someone shoot a long exposure on a tree before either. So um, yeah, happy with that. Let me know what you think. So unfortunately I had a microphone malfunction at this point, um, so I haven't even included the sound as you really couldn't hear what I was saying, but basically my point here is that I'm going to use my camera with a prime lens and try and get some handheld shots uh, of the tree. The idea of this is to give a bit of story, um, try and include something in the foreground, some depth of field, so something in the foreground um, that will be out of focus with the tree sharp um, in the distance. And I did get a couple of shots here that I was quite pleased with. So I'll skip through the me wandering around, taking the pictures, talking away to myself and you can't hear me. And I'll just show you um, a couple of the shots um, that I got. Right, so I think for the fourth uh, way of shooting the tree. I'm going to turn to my zoom lens, which is the third lens I've got in my bag, which goes right up to 300 mil. Focus right in, I think the focus is going to be the colour of those leaves, so I'd quite like to get the vertical shape of the trunk, I'm thinking, and then focus in on those greens and yellows and see what they look like filling the frame. So, again, I hope it works. Okay, so when we're using the, the zoom lens, it's back onto the tripod because the, the more you zoom in on the subject, the less light that's getting into the lens, so um, again, to keep it steady handheld, you'd have to have a really high ISO to bump up your exposure and that would um, get sort of grainy and a bit noisy. So um, now I'm currently at um, ISO 100. What I'll do is I'll flip you around and show you in the camera what I'm looking at. Oh, a noisy dog barks away in the background. Okay, so what I really like about this exercise is that you take different types of photos that you probably wouldn't normally take. So, as I say, it's an exercise in just sort of training my eye and trying some different types of shots. I'm not suggesting that any of these shots are going to be any of my best, um, but it's worth trying. So, really the focus of, of this shot is the, the colour of the leaves, so getting a nice green and yellow, and the shape of the trunk just coming down the middle, which I think that needs to be dead centre. Um, I've got it at the widest possible aperture, which is f6. Um, ideally, I'd probably want to go a little bit wider than that if I could to throw some more of the background out of, out of focus, but not sure it matters. Um, it's quite bright in the background, that's the only thing, so I'll probably work on that in, um, in post to make sure I bring that down and bring out the, uh, the trunk, the shadows a bit. But yeah, there's a little bit of light catching it. Unfortunately, I don't have a polarizer attachment for this lens, so I'm going to have to manage without that. Um, but yeah, so and I think a 30th will not actually in fact be enough to catch the you can see the movement of the leaves so if i bump my iso up to 
I make it about 400, 500. So again, let me focus again and see if we capture them while they're nice and still. Yeah, nice. Um, so I'll show you that now and hopefully that's come out just as a nice abstract close-up image um, all about the patterns and the colours. shot um, I actually jumped ahead and took it handheld really quickly so as you can see there's some nice light coming down that doesn't often last very long um, but what I've done is I've used um, some natural framing for the last one which is a nice compositional technique um, using the things around the subject to, to give it a natural frame which is just what it sounds like basically um, which can work it can be um, a little bit messy I, I sort of go back and forth it but I really like this one you can see I'm just gonna keep taking these at the moment I've got an f11 because actually I would like them to be in focus um, and that shadow on the bottom is just giving it a lovely that's working as a frame as well actually, which I think it's just sort of framing the bottom of it so um, whether it could probably do with being a little bit closer and possibly tilting up a bit as well which I can't do well more than this I might try that in a minute um, but yeah that's it naturally frames it gives it a surrounding and draws your focus to the subject so and some beautiful evening light um, I say evening light it's about three o'clock Yes, sort of classes now it's evening like it's only a couple of hours of sunlight left so it's a bit harsh but um it might actually make for a very nice black and white that one um because really it's the light that's bringing it and not necessarily the color it's quite monotone um, which is generally green so um yeah plenty there to work with so i'll show you that one now and uh that will be the end of the exercise <laughs> hope that has been useful to see um, as I said not necessarily the focus to get the best shots of my uh, photography career not that it's a career um, but just to keep training that eye to try and get even better in uh, different compositions so hope you've enjoyed that um, and you're having a nice day and we'll see you again very soon